I'm uh, Lucy Nevermov, uh, engineer at Cisco. Um, what I'd like to show you now is um, what we're doing with Docker and ACI. And um, one, um, Docker really enables you to create with, um, to create first of all, a clustering environment with multiple servers. And um, as you have a cluster, from any server that you have, you can create containers. Each container, per se, you can see that as an application, okay? So a container, for example, can have very basically, just to stick to the previous example, a web app and maybe say a database or, or you know, a few other applications. And each time you, you, you'd like to create a new or, 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 and then that container will provide a sp specific amount of throughput and number of connections, TCP and so on for this environment. When that environment, for example, needs to grow, what happens, we just create another instance of it and, that, and you keep adding instances to basically scale out the environment. So in other words, say you have a couple of gigabytes, say you have 10 gig going to an app and you, for that purpose you need one, two, three VMs and then your throughput um, increases. Number of people from the internet coming is more and more and more. There's a peak time and um, orders for the holidays, whatever it is. So more containers will be created with the same app and they will basically elastically grow. Um, when there's less request, there's also a shrinkage or the, the, these instances will reduce automatically. So that's just from, from a container standpoint where I see that this is an interesting use case. What happens for the network? Well, the network has to provide connectivity for all these containers that are being created. And um, what's, you know, you ha there's different ways to do this. One aspect is to say, okay, I will just create X number of networks and hope for the best. So um, my, my um, containers will grow and we'll use the network resources. I run out of network, then I'll have to figure out what I do. Another approach is to say, well, each time I have a container um, expansion or reduction, I'm going to use a policy. And I'm going to map each and single activity to a policy, um, network policy that I create. Um, that policy will actually have the properties of the network, the subnet, the default gateway, uh, and that can be automatically picked by Docker being random, whatever it is. Or you can, as a network um, administrator, actually specify what you like it to be if you want to keep control of, of, what's, of what's being used or give a range. What I find really interesting here is the policy aspect. The, by using ACI, we have a very elegant mapping because we're using policy in ACI. Every time a container will be created, this will map to a new policy in ACI. So say I create 50 containers. This will create 50, new, 50 policies on ACI directly, right away. And uh, it will provide connectivity to them, to all of these containers, to whoever they need to talk. And now the enforcement will be done on the switches. So for example, for a container you can say, I have these two app, web and database, and I'd like to just open two TCP ports in there. Okay, in that case, the policy um, from the Docker cluster is pushed to, to the ACI, um, to the APIC controller, and um, we create a policy for that, that container, so we map it to an endpoint group. And, and what we'll do is, if that Docker app is only allowing two ports, these two ports will be configured as the only two ports allowed um, on the ACI fabric and the enforcement will be done in hardware on the switches. So basically the switch will only allow these two ports for traffic for that specific container, any switch where the container is, is connected. Um, so there is really, uh, I think, an interesting value here in terms of policy mapping and um, 
you know, scaling in, uh, scaling out, and scaling back uh, an environment with Docker. This is what I'll try to show you now uh, in this demo. Is um, so I have a cluster um, of two uh, physical servers, and um, we'll try to here create basically just um, containers or production app, for example, with two um, with a database and web. And we'll just see how this translates to to the APIC. Okay. So um, I wanted to show you here in tenants what I have. I just have the basic common infrastructure and management, and um, this is here now. A, a I have two physical servers, um, server one and server two, and um, what I want to see is what's running. So I'll say Docker info. And if I type Docker info, I see that I have basically a cluster which is active. This is the IP of this specific physical server one, and this is the other server, server two. Um, currently, there is no containers over here. And there is one here. I believe it's the default um, that it's here. And the scheduler is actually active. So it tells me how many CPUs in total I have. and and this is what I have. Um, now I'm going to use, I'm going to do, for example, Docker PS, just to show you that I currently have one, um, one uh, type of container running, which is basically a container for APIC, for ACI. And what just this does is, anytime there's a new container being created, it will basically push the policy to ACI and provision the switches to be um, to allow traffic across. So um, let's go and go in. And let me know if it. I need to expand the, the, the screen um, resolution. I'll go into Compose and um, let me cat this file. There's a Docker Compose. You see here, I'm going to basically create um, a web app that's using this port, and this is a database that it's called Redis. So I have web and database that are being created. So um, for that, I have uh, have a command somewhere that will tell me here. Uh, where was it? I want to create that one app, and I have this somewhere. One second, here it is. Okay. So I'm creating basically with this command um, that I um, that is called Docker Compose. I'm calling an, an, an application production, and I'm starting the daemon for it. And so this is my app production. Within the container production, I have a web and a database. So web and Redis. Now if I go into APIC, ah great, it worked. Contiv default is a new tenant that was just created. And um, I go into the application that I just created that I called prod, and you see it displayed over here. So it actually created right away um, an application network profile called production and two um, uh, EPGs, one for the web server, one for the um, database server. And if I'll drill down in networking, it also picked up um, you know, a bridge domain, and we have subnet in here. Um, just so you see this now, let's do it again. I will just reduce this over here. Let's create something else. So let's call this uh, Tech Day app, for example, Compose. You see, there is a new here, application network profile, Tech Day, that was created with these two apps in there. Um, I can connect into these containers. And for example, uh, let me go into, first of all, Docker inspect. Let me show you a few things here. Um, I'm going to look at what TCP ports are being used for the um, database. So one container is using these two ports, and the other one is using basically the same. Right. So these are the TCP ports that the database is being using. So if I go into, for example, my um, the container itself, 
So I go in the, the container for um, prod and the, the database. And over here, I'll, I'll, I'll go and show you the range of ports that are being used. So I'll do a netcat. And so we said three, 6379. So I'm going to scan 10 ports from 70 to 80. Uh, I think it's read this one. Did I have? Oh, it's actually, it actually answered it here. Open. So it basically shows, this was the command, the previous one, sorry. This port is the only port that's open. And that's enforced on the switch, the leaf, the Nexus leaf, because Netcat, I'm just trying to scan for all the ports that are open, and I'm talking to the outside, and only that port is the one that answers as being open from the range. Um, and if I go now and I'm going to exit this container um, and um, I have, I can go ahead and um, compose. I have another file that I could automate, but um, I can create, for example, an instance of say 50 containers automatically. What you will see is this will basically create 50 instances of different EPGs or, you know, so this can, then this can scale um, to anything you, you create. And there's a, a mapping. What I find really exciting is this mapping of policy um, between whatever apps you create on Docker that translates on the ACI part and makes it to communicate. So that's what I had so far for Docker. Um, any questions? So did you say you're making the policies in Docker and then that's being communicated to ACI or is it the other way around? So in Docker, um, in Docker what, what you create is the containers. And there is just one container that we called APIC. That one basically is just monitoring and it's the one pushing to ACI through your API what you type on Docker. So we create it on the Docker site on the cluster and we push it. So, you know, for, for the app developer, he has, it's just the network assumes what it should be doing. It's just learning the state that it needs to configure and auto configures itself. itself. So it's almost the opposite of what we saw before where APIC was pushing config out. This is learning from from uh, something that's been configured on something that's, that has a, has a tie-in. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, sounds like it's adding an extra step on top. So you, you configure it, and you do it in Docker, it pushes it to ACI, which then, or APIC, which then pushes it out to the, whatever switches and yes. load balancers it, and whatever it, it needs to default, talk to. We'll push down mm -hmm. to everything to the switches and you could also imagine things more ev um, more evaluated for um, uh, things you, you could think you could do service chaining as well from Docker, right? Say your web and database need to have a firewall in between. That little container that we have for APIC, well, you could just say configure F5 or configure Palo Alto or whatever it is. Right, so how would that look? I mean, since, since it's learning, learning about these new instances, these new containers from Docker, yep. do you have um, service graphs that are pre-set up for that particular instance? Like, how, how, would that, thinking, how would that function? We're thinking about it now. Okay. Um, and it's something I've, I, was, I've, I was thinking now, but it's something we'll, I think we'll, we should, we'll look into doing in that little container. So you may have to pre-configure something or, or the flow, the nature of the flow should go top down. Um, Understood. We start looking at it, yeah. Understood. But um, yeah, you could enforce basically, you, you give to the hardware and to the network the functions of providing the network services, routing and, and allowing traffic, and so service chaining could be one of them. That were. How much did you have to have configured on the APIC before that? Did you, you had to have the endpoint groups? The I'm glad you asked. It's, 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 it's very, um, I, when I, let me show you here when I started the, just I had to, to start the process earlier, just before the session, I clicked on start NP. This is the information 
That's it. So it's, it's, it's the IP address of the APIC, the credentials, and just where the host, uh, one of the host is connected. So the cluster, um, the, where, how is the, 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 we're connecting on APIC Leaf Ethernet 7, and we're running APIC poster, um, basically container. But you see the information that's being passed is it's just, what's my leaf? Um, so it's my node 101. This is the APIC, the controller, um, the ACI controller IP address, and my username and uh, password. 